your expectations should only be, and I want your feedback on this, it should only be connected to your belief. So our belief was, you and I have fairly high belief in fitness. Our belief was we're in really good shape. What are your expectations of yourself? What are your expectations of others? And more importantly, what are your expectations of the world? Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, NLU Weekly Live Podcast, week number 138, how your expectations affect your reality. Alan and I are overlooking the wonderful Toronto, Canada right now, and we are on the 30th floor, and we have a nice little setup. Our laptop is down here. Alan has his notes. We're going to figure it out. We're winging it, and we're going to have to pass the microphone, and it's going to be fine. Anything you want to add before we get going? Oh, yeah, let me pass this microphone. What's happening, everyone? Yeah, so this will be a little bit different. So we're looking at a camera across the room here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So good to see you. So we have three main points we want to get through here of how your expectations affect your reality. And the first one is they dictate what emotions you feel. So every time you go into a circumstance, whether it be this trip to Toronto or the speeches or trainings that we gave earlier this week, you have a certain expectation of what that's going to be like. And if it goes better than you expected, you're most likely going to feel really good about it. If it goes worse than expected, you're not going to feel very good about it. And so you have to understand that process of what are you expecting and are you inspecting what you're expecting? So there's a bunch of different scenarios that we can go through. So let's say Kevin and I thought the three speeches were going to go really well and the training was going to go really well. I personally, so we spoke to seventh and eighth graders. We spoke to ninth and 10th graders. And then the third speech was 11th and 12th graders. And then we gave a training in the evening. I thought the training would be the easier one. And I thought the hardest one was going to be the middle school students, which is seventh and eighth grade, because I thought that um, it would be difficult to relate to them because it's obviously been a really long time since Kevin and myself have been in their position in middle school. And it actually ended up being the opposite. So the seventh and eighth graders, the speech went really, really well. That was one of the best ones. And it got progressively a little more difficult because we didn't understand something that we now understand, which is as people get older and older and older, a lot of times what happens is they get a little bit more closed minded, a little bit more skeptical. And so we needed to do a better job of opening with story and being more relatable. But we ex I expected the training to be the easiest and the middle school students to be the most challenging. It actually ended up being the opposite. And so again, this this episode is how your expectations affect your reality. And every time you go into a scenario, you have expectations, whether you're aware of it or not, and they're dictating your emotions, whether you feel good or bad about whether we feel good or bad about our speeches is predicated on what we thought would happen versus what did happen. This is very, very weird. There's a lot going on here. Okay. The reason I wanted to do this episode or this title, this live podcast, every week, the team usually pings me and says, hey, what do you want to do for the next live podcast? And I think to myself, what have I gone through? What is Alan going through? What do I have friends going through, clients going through, family members, whatever it may be? Somebody I know that's very close to me, they have had four or five mentors in their, their space before. And there's this common pattern that keeps happening. So when I was talking to this person, we were talking about their latest mentor. And I said, so how's that going? How's the mentor going? What's the relationship like? As you get closer to this person, you're getting closer to the truth. What's that like? And he said, honestly, there's some red flags popping up. And we went deep and we had this conversation. And I said, what are they? Why do you think they're popping up? But we made this connection. Every time this person meets a new mentor, their expectations of this person and what they think is going to happen over the long run, it affects their decision making. So in the very beginning, this person is the best and they're super supportive and they're a great mentor and they're selfless and they're caring, they're character driven. But as this person gets to know these mentors at a deeper level, they find out that that's not necessarily the reality. And I would say the expectations dictate the approach. They want the expectations to be the reality when in reality, you like that? It usually, <laughs> it usually doesn't work that way. Another way you can look at it is a new job. So I remember when I would start new jobs, I would start the job and my expectation was, wow, this is amazing. I'm going to love this forever. This is going to be the thing I do for the next however many years. And I would make my decisions based on that. We've talked a lot about when I bought a brand new car and my car was, 
I think the car payment was $420 a month. That was based on the expectation that I like this job now. I'm going to like this job next year and I'm going to like this job for this foreseeable future. You have to understand in the beginning, your expectations don't have any of the negative parts of reality. They also don't have some of the positive parts of reality. But I think it's important to understand that if you're making decisions based on short-term expectations, your long-term reality might take a hit and you might be regretful that you made your decisions that way. This is very strange. We're passing the mic today. So the second point that Kevin and I talked about before jumping on here was this. There are three expectations that we all have, and these are subconscious. The first one is expectations of self. The second one is expectations of other people and how they're supposed to treat you or supposed to act, quote unquote. And then the third is your expectations of the world. The example that I actually have for this one. So Kevin and I earlier today, we were walking to the gym. This cord's getting caught. We were walking to the gym earlier today and we're both, we don't frequent cities. We're not often in big cities. So we looked it up. Toronto is the largest city in Canada. There's 2.7 million people here. And we've been here before, but it was three years ago or so. So we're walking to the gym and we're not often in cities. And so we're not normally around a large homeless population. And in terms of cities, I'm not sure if Toronto is on the higher end or lower end of that. I'm not sure. But what I do know is that Kevin and I are definitely not used to walking across the road and seeing someone sleeping on the sidewalk. And so for us, that was really emotional and it was challenging to witness that because it's not normal for us. Whereas some of the people that are often in the city They've been a little bit um, desensitized to that. They're more used to that. And so again, what are your expectations of yourself? What are your expectations of others? And more importantly, what are your expectations of the world? Are you are you living in a world where you're not expecting something like that? Because Kevin and I were not expecting to see people sleeping on the streets. And we probably should have been because in cities, that is a thing, right? And so there's implications to this. And the way you feel about yourself, the way you feel about other people, and the way you feel about the world. I've been talking a lot about this lately. In cognitive behavioral therapy, there's beliefs that you have about self, beliefs you have about other people, and there's beliefs that you have about the world. The question is, how accurate are you in those beliefs? That's why coming into the city, we looked it up. Is this the largest city? Wow, this is huge. Okay, how large is it? Okay, 2.7 million people. Okay, what's New York City? 8.8 million people. Oh, okay, so it's very large. What about Boston? Okay, Boston is 700 or 675,000, excuse me, people. Okay, so now we understand what to expect because we've been to Boston a lot of times and we've been to New York City. So now we kind of have a a more accurate understanding of what we're getting ourselves into here. And so that's a good example I think of how do you have accurate expectations? And Kevin and I talk about this often. Whenever you take new actions, you're going to reset any inaccuracies you have in your thinking. So for example, we were at a gym earlier called uh, Good Life Fitness. Good Life Fitness. Kevin and I are both used to working out at our home gyms. And my home gym is a really small one. I'll speak for myself. I'm kind of a big fish in a small pond there. This was a very, very large pond. And so Kevin and I working out there is very different. It's like, oh, wow. Okay, so there's 2.7 million people in the city. This is one of the higher end gyms. There's an escalator in this gym. And there's some really, really, really in shape people. So it's important to just understand that You have to get outside your environment every now and then. And when you take action, you're going to get new data and that's going to level set whatever those expectations were prior to going into something. I was going to ask you a question, but in order to ask you a question, I have to get the mic and then I can give you the mic back. (laughs) I think that, okay, the reason, one of the reasons, or that I guess the layers under this, your expectations should only be, and I want your feedback on this, it should only be connected to your belief. So our belief was, you and I have fairly high belief in fitness. Our belief was we're in really good shape. And if you put us in a a gym with other people, we'll probably be in the top percentile. Today, that wasn't necessarily the case for either of us. And we had a very deep, I would, I would go on the verge of saying depressing conversation about it. What What do you do now? Okay, are you recalibrating your expectations of yourself now that your reality has changed? Can you, and we're going to do an episode on this. It'll be, I don't know if it's Wednesday's episode or Friday. We're going to do a full episode on this, but I do think this is going hand in hand with what we're talking about. So what was that experience like and what do we do from there? Uh, Appreciate the question, brother. So yeah, so the depressing conversation we had earlier. Now, well, so here's what happened. 
I've been living at home with my beautiful girlfriend, Emilia, in the small town of Oxbridge, Massachusetts, like North Oxbridge area for the last year, year or more. I think we're coming up on a year. And so I've been going to this small anytime fitness gym. And so what Kevin really is asking there is I had these certain beliefs about myself. We all do. We all think we're either in shape or not. We all think we're either really intelligent or not. We all think we're successful or we're not, but it's all relative. What does that even mean? And it all depends on who you compare to. So when you go to a place like Toronto and then you go to a really big gym, you have to reassociate and re-understand. Okay, so my beliefs were off. I was a little bit off on that because now I have a bigger sample size to go off of. And so really, in to answer your question, Kev, I was re-evaluating myself. I was re-evaluating other people and I was re-evaluating what I believed about the world so that I can think more accurately, so that I can make better choices. And in real time, I'll take you through this. Kevin and I got five guys last night, five guys, burgers and fries, and it was delicious, but we both eat, ate like 3,000 calories. Yeah. Hello, my name is Eddie Pinero. I'm the founder of Your World Within. And I wanted to take a second and just express how valuable working with Alan has been Uh, His ability to help me create clarity and and maintain focus on my big picture goals has been huge. You know, he's been a huge asset with the roadmap as well, the day-to-day things, the little things that we sometimes overlook. I think anyone looking to, you know, grow themselves, grow uh, a business or or both, you know, would truly benefit from having Alan as an ally along the way. Uh, Again, great mind, but more importantly, solid dude. And so then we went to the gym and then I had that talk with Kev of like, I don't want to do that again tonight, essentially, because it's time for me to really get it, get it together and get back to my old best, my new best. And so we got Subway today. So we immediately changed our decisions based on the new accurate thinking of realizing that we're not as in shape as we thought. And I think it's important to do that. And that's really what this episode is about too, of Do you expect a lot of yourself? Do you expect that you'll be in shape in five years? Do you expect you'll be successful in five years? Do you expect that you'll retire with financial freedom? Because if you have those expectations, then you have to really constantly check in on those of like, am I on track or not? And I was definitely off track. And, And those humble pie moments of reality checks is what we call these are like very necessary for you to start really taking things seriously again. Um, and I also, uh, posted a photo. No, I didn't post it. I shared a photo earlier of an older photo of me. And that was also a reality check too, of like, wow, I used to be a lot bigger and stronger. And so that's data coming in and, and it's important to re associate and re assess where you're actually at, where you really want to head and what your belief systems really are and what you are expecting of yourself, of others and of the world. Thanks, man. Strong work. We, this week's episodes are going to be very uh, current because a lot of our episodes this week are based on our travels. It's been a wild travel week for us, not only the speech, but the travel and flight cancellations and all that, masterminding in the car. It's been a lot. But Alan and I, after the speeches and after the training, we were reflecting in the Airbnb in Milwaukee. And this is a great and I don't know if you said this when I was setting the timer, trying to crawl under the camera, but it's a great way to think about it. My expectation was that we would have some students who vibed with what we said, but the majority of students probably wouldn't care that we were there. And nothing against those students. I know if I was in middle school and or early high school, I probably would have considered it a day off. It's like, well, these two guys are coming. They're going to talk about self-improvement. Awesome. We're going to be in the auditorium. We don't have to be in class. My expectations were that some people would enjoy it, other people wouldn't. My expectation was that I would do okay in the speech portion. I believe I did better than I expected, therefore I am happy. Where if you go into something and you say, I want to impact every person in this audience to the deepest level that they change their life and they're never the same, you might go in there with that expectation and the reality is going to be different. No matter what, the reality is almost always going to be different. 
So if you're somebody who has a low level of belief, if you do not have a ton of belief in what you're capable of, you have to make sure that you're setting your expectations in accordance to that. And that's what I was talking to Alan about when I asked that question. I feel like I'm a good speaker, but being on stage is completely different than being here. Even now I'm nervous because if you saw behind the scenes and you will, cause we'll do, we'll do some social media content, but this is just out of the element. I'm not in the studio. I can't hear myself talking. My expectations of this are, let's just get through it. I want to add value obviously, but I also don't want to make a fool of myself, but you have to make sure that your expectations are connected to your belief. Because if you have expectations that this is my first speech ever, I'm going to go on stage and I am absolutely going to crush it. What you're doing is you're creating this potential delta between what's even possible and what's going to happen. You most likely will do better than you think, but not if you think you're going to do the best. And that's a weird, it's a very weird thing. Last thing before I kick it to you, four minutes. The first speech I ever gave, I remember I was shaking so bad that I could hear it in the replay. And my expectation was, this is going to go horribly wrong. I might get laughed off stage. This is going to be brutal. The reality is, I did okay. But since I thought I was going to do terrible, okay was a very, very welcome surprise. So my goal in telling that story is, if you're overshooting what you think is possible, you might do just fine, but be disappointed, and vice versa. And then on Kev's next speech, you expected it to go awesome and it ended up being the opposite. So again, be very, very careful of what, and this is a good question to ask. What are my expectations of this? Uh, another example, Kevin and I are driving into Canada and we were curious and we, we always do this. So he asked something along the lines of, what do you think the population is in Canada? And I think I said 120, 120 million, I think. And what did you say? 90 million? 90 million. We found out it was 36 36 million people, which is significantly less than the U.S., which is where we're from. Okay, so we were off. What we were expecting was a lot more people than what we were. But when we got to Toronto, 2.7 million was actually higher than we expected. And so again, at the end of the day, what this is really about is there's a reality and then there's your perception of it. And they're never the same. Okay? They're the question is not, how do I be perfect in my thinking? If you've ever seen the, the show, The Price is Right, they show a product or, or something and they say, okay, can you guess the price of this? Very rarely is the candidate on stage actually correct about the price. So that's a lot how this works. What you expect of self, what you expect of the world, what you expect of others is very rarely the exact accurate truth of what is going to happen. But the more and more often you do something, the more feedback you get, the more and more accurate you are in your thinking. And so if you think about an athlete who was super, super fast in, in high school, I know Brandon behind the scenes, he's going to come out here soon. He was really, really good at track. I think he was third in the state in sprinting. And if he were to do that now and he were to think, oh, I'm still like I used to be, then he would be very humbled. So at the end of the day, the goal here is to think as accurately as possible because then at least you're not going to get overly humble pie or you're not going to essentially sell yourself short because if you think the speech is going to bomb and you're actually good, you're never going to do it. But if you think you're amazing and then you show up, you're going to eat tons of humble pie and you might not ever speak again. And so whether it's speaking or podcasting or coaching or anything that you do, singing, songwriting, you name it, dancing, the key is to try to have expectations as accurately as possible. And uh, I think when we're young, we tend to have more expectations of self bigger goals, bigger dreams, things are going to work out, that kind of thing. I think we tend to be more optimistic. And then I think as we get older and older and older, we actually start to sell ourselves short. We start to close what's possible for us. And we, you know, disappointment after disappointment after disappointment can really do that to you. So um, that's all I've got for today. And uh, Brandon's going to come out pretty soon. <laughs> I have another question for you. Oh, okay. Okay. And I like that we can do this live. Make sure this is plugged in. It's I'm watching the screen to make sure nothing's going off the rails. What were your expectations of this live podcast versus the reality? And we're halfway through, so there's plenty of time for us to jeff this. But what were your expectations going in, and what has your reality been in 43 seconds? Appreciate the questions, brother. So for those of you who don't know, I actually am really afraid of heights, and we're right now we're on the 30th floor, and so if I look down. It, 
quite literally freaks me out because behind this couch, you kind of can't even see the floor. And yes, there's windows here, but it's a, it's a little bit of a trip for me. So this has gone a lot better than I thought it would. And I've done a better job than I thought I would. Um, but that's also because I expect it to be a little bit more terrible on this podcast than I expected because I am right on the edge of a 30 story building. Uh, so yeah, I think it went better than I thought, but I didn't think it would go horribly wrong either. Cause we always figure it out. What about, what about you? You want to grab that? I would say, uh, I think it's gone pretty accurately, fairly accurately. Usually when I, my natural panic move tendency is to ask Alan questions when I'm freaking out. So that's why you probably have gotten more questions than usual in this, I would say. Okay. It's easy for me because I know when you get asked a question, you'll just go off. You eat up a lot of time. Try to. You know, so I'm not too worried about it. I don't try to. I just have a lot to say. Next level nation. We have hit our goal. We did it. We, have, we hit, have we hit our goal at Next Level Hope Foundation? Oh, yeah. yeah. We have we hit our, exceeded it. We exceeded our goal at Next Level Hope Foundation. Thank you so very much to everybody who donated. If you are local to the Worcester, Massachusetts area, and you are a single parent of however many children, we would love for you to join us. We're at the Greendale Worcester YMCA. We rented it all out. We're going to have games. We're going to have food. We're going to have gifts for the children. It's going to be wonderful. What's the date? December 18th. December 18th. Please join us. It's totally free. It's going to be awesome. We'll have pictures. You'll hear me sing. We'll be dancing. We'll be playing basketball. You'll see me dunk on Alan. You don't want to miss that. <laughs> uh, the, the landing page. Did you say the landing page was in the? Okay. The landing page is in the comments and or the show notes. Uh, also, if you want to kickstart 20, 2023 off right. So I know it's coming up on December here. We're at the tail end of November. Holidays are coming up. Next of a Hope Foundation holiday event. It's coming up. If you want 2023 to be a new year and a new you, we have something for you. So group 10 of group coaching. At this point, this is our 10th group. We've really got a well-polished product here at this point. Again, it's you and nine other next level people looking to get to the next level. And we have an assistant coach, Kevin and myself, bi-weekly coaching. We've got a workbook, private WhatsApp group. It's actually fantastic. Join uh, or check out the link in the show notes and or the link in the comments below. At the very least, if you want 2023 to be different, this is the Mario Kart booster that really can get your year started off right. And uh, what better time to start than January 3rd? It starts on January 3rd. So obviously January 1st, January 2nd, January 3rd, you're going to kickstart your whole year and then make 2023 the year where you really do achieve your goals um, and don't fall off your New Year's resolutions.